Oh yeah, it's uh, Xavier. I'm in my bonsai retreat. You're going to hear that again in a second because I'm going to be showing you some uh, pre-recorded footage of work I did on uh, Zeta's uh, memorial apple tree, which is slowly becoming a bonsai. Like a lot of my videos, it was due for release months ago. Um, the actual work was done end of May, beginning of uh, June. But I held it back because, um, well, today is the... Uh, it's the anniversary of my wife's birthday. As with all things, time does heal. And I think, I think because this is a, a memorial to my wife and it's for her um, and me, and I'm sharing it with you, not for subscribers, not for clicks, likes, views, but simply as a way of me giving thanks and keeping her memory alive for those who knew her. But then I thought, do you know what? I've got Jason's haiku book and uh, I'm sure he's got so much stuff on so many different subjects I'm sure there might be something there and um, I was trying to think about those early days of grief and sure enough Jason's got a chapter about death, loss and grief and uh, I thought I'd read one that um, would probably closest fit how I felt in those sort of first 18 months so I thought I'd share it with you sharing my cold bed with a bitter ghost of you through the longest nights that's for, for me and uh, going through grief. I think the, the biggest change I made was um, when I sold my um, king size bed uh, probably a year ago now. And that was a big, big thing. But I think those words summed up the emptiness that bed felt. Um, yeah. So thank you for that one, Jason. And I thought we'd better go on to something a bit different because that was a bit teary. And old photographs. I thought, what else could he have written about that may bring up? And as you've seen, I put a few photographs of Zeta up and the, the thumbnail, and they'll come up in the video as well. I think there's one of our wedding, very early stuff back in the early 90s. Gazing at us from the near dim and distant past. Ghosts. Old photographs. Now, truthfully, I love all my old photographs, and I've got stuff way back from, from my parents when they were young. So, you know, I think one of the sad things is we've probably lost in this digital time is that everyone saves all their photographs onto files and they take hundreds and hundreds of them so they never ever get looked at whereas I go to my, this box, it's a big box but I can, I can lose myself for hours looking through old photographs for... Anyway, Haiku Dreams, Jason Anrahan, I'm sure if you go to his, his channel there'll be a way of uh, purchasing that. He doesn't pay me anything for advertising it but he did give it to me for free. Anyway. You want to see the video so as i say we're going to head back to the uh early's of early days of june and you're going to watch me hack my um memorial tree my memorial apple which was started from a seed and that's just a uh teaser for something that's to come in coming weeks oh just one final thing massive apology um glare was a big issue and i still hadn't sorted out uh, the camera properly so there are areas where the glare gets really bad um, overall the content's good so i ask you to be patient um, i have dealt with it and recognized it but it is a memorial to my wife so some of this stuff cannot be refilmed and i want to keep a little legacy to her so please bear with it and thank you for doing that so over to me Oh yeah, it's uh, Xavier and uh, welcome to my bonsai retreat. And today, we're going to be looking at Zeta's apple. For those who have watched my channel regularly, you'll know that uh, my late wife Zeta, she died, oh, just over, three, oh gosh, she died over three years, three, nearly three and a half years ago. God rest her soul. Time does fly and that's, that's the way we look at, mm, time does fly. Um, but uh, one of the legacies she did leave me, apart from my family, my children, the house, and the ability to do bonsai for the rest of my life, um, was this. She, um, she developed an apple from an apple seed, funny how it works that way, and she was determined that she was going to grow it, and uh, I was not allowed to touch it. And uh, I tried many times because I really liked this whole, this whole root structure on it. And uh, no matter what I said, wouldn't let me have it. And... Uh, no, I didn't take advantage of the situation, but uh, I think probably out of, um, out of respect for her, 
probably about six months after she died, I decided to try and bonsai it. And uh, there's a couple of videos on that, which something will be coming up about now. And the sun is about to come, so I can see reflections of my life off my rather large and bald forehead. So I'm going to get my hat. Yeah, so I've spent a little bit of time with this one. I have to say, this is the year when it's put on lots of growth, and I'm glad I, I left it alone a bit. Certainly, you'll know this really, really pretty scar here. That's a branch I managed to kill in the early days. Uh, and for those of you who've seen the videos, you'll, you'll understand what went on before. But needless to say, what it has done now is recovered. So I'm just going to do a little bit of pruning on this. Um, I'm not going to go to town on it because I respect the fact this is probably the first year and it's going, hey, look at me. I'm a healthy apple tree. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Oh, here's something for you. I had this guy come to me and says, um, says what do you know about bonsai? I looked at him, thought about it. I just said very little. Ba boom <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I had to take that one off. Um, I'm sure it was uh, Darren. It was Darren who told me that one, but um, it's a steal anyway. <laughs> Better to go for it from that one. So uh, all I'm going to do is one clean up, probably worth. I'm now going to talk to you about one of the biggest issues I have with apples and crab apples, and I have got quite a few, but they very rarely feature. And I'll, I'll show you a crab apple in a minute. One thing drives me insane, and it's the um, woolly, uh, woolly aphids. And I'll, I'll zoom in on one so you see what I mean. Every year, the apple trees without fail get it, and it's right there. That woolly white stuff looks ever so nice, and underneath that, is a horrible little bug that sucks the life out of your apple trees. There's another one there, under there, and you're constantly looking for them. And what you'll notice is, you see there, it's a, um, a round lump, and it's basically a gall. It um, creates this, um, this scarring. So I'm constantly, one, removing these galls from under there, but also constantly trying to um, Keep these white fluffy aphids over there and here. See, so forever with your apples and stuff like that, with either the anti uh, aphid stuff, you just give up on it. But it drives me nuts. That's dead enough. I've got to cut that down. But going back, what I'll do is I'm going to treat it regularly a solution of soap, water, and a little bit of oil. Again, same thing we do with all this. We don't want the suckers there, so we're going to remove the suckers. Try as best I can to dig out all the uh, all the aphids. And a lot of them, these woolly ones, will actually camp down amongst the roots. So they'll be under here in the soil. There's See there, there's a whole load there. There you go, there's the police coming to get them. And you get, so what you end up with is these great big gall lumps. Um, really annoying. But it's part and parcel of the beast, I suppose. So you just have to stay vigilant. Um, I do a, an overwintering spray, but there's so many bumps and lumps in here that it's very, very difficult to get all those little eggs before they uh, become horry, horrible woolly aphids. So anyway. So I go around it and I say I'll spray it every couple of weeks. I want to remove a bit more of that. And I can see there's a collar here. So I can actually go quite, quite low down on it. I'm going to nibble away at that. Now, when they're healthy, they're pretty resistant and uh, able to take quite a few knocks. So I'm quite, quite happy that this will be fine. Okay. A little bit rough. I'll put a load of cut paste on that. Okay, so got a nice cut paste on it. it certainly means that up nicely. Now all I'm going to do is to say check the bark for any obvious crit critters that some higher up here. And, uh, and do a bit of pruning. Got a branch that's going backwards and nowhere, which is absolutely useless. So we'll get rid of that. Got well, something going up, but we'll get rid of that. 
got this nice branch here I like that and we've also got a branch off here so we need to bring it right back so let's bring it back to three um, one two three I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be suicidally heavy on this but I would like to get buds I'll oh, get rid of that leaf get rid of the um, I want something to grow from this bud here closer in leaf cutting Again, remember, fold on the inside line where you want it, about half, and then you get that. And I'll just do that on some of the bigger leaves. Sharpen the angle, nicer cut on it. But again, what I am looking to do is to clear out nearer the junctions, the older leaves, so I can get a better idea of what's in there. It also just gives much cleaner lines for the uh, the future branches. That's all I want to do on that. When that gets stronger, I will more than likely wire that up. We've got a little one here. Again, very, very useful. It's uh, coming from that point there, which is a horizontal slightly down. I'm quite happy with that. So let's just get rid of a little bit of these. All we do want to make sure here is its location is underneath lots of foliage. What we don't want is this one to die, just for lack of light. So that means I do have to do some good defoliation up the top. Make sure it can be seen. But apart from that, I want that to grow. So I don't want the one that's just directly above it. We'll get rid of that. At the moment, what I'm doing, what we've got is a, a V here. Quite a long straight section there with nothing on it. I have an opportunity here with this with this branch here to uh, try to remove it or actually consider wiring it which might not be a bad option and then that makes that a bit redundant doesn't it wonder okay it didn't take long it's lovely I've got all this vigor and part of me is saying let's not let's not destroy that but let's start looking at relative thickness of branches. If that is to be the new leader, I, if I'm taking that one over, then I need that one to be thicker than that one, and it's not. Also, that's got a little bit of nice movement, and it follows there, so that would be the natural leader. Um, so either stick with this as being this V shape, or cut it. And then we've got this one, then we'll have this one here. How does that look? I mean, it, it makes sense. I'm just, I'm just a little bit um, careful about being a bit too gung ho on this tree. It uh, is a memorial to my wife. So I'm going to think about. It. I'm going to cut some more of this stuff back. So let's just work our way further here. Let's clean up. We've got an upward one here. Uh, and at the moment, I'm working something I'm not actually going to wire these, so the relative positions of these upward growing branches won't change. Obviously, I don't need to make a decision about this branch yet. Uh, so this comes out, quite like it, and we'll just cut it off there. Okay, so if we move further up, we're looking in at here being where we're at. Let's get rid of that now. Okay, so this is going to be brought right back. Um, so the first points here, we've got one leaf, two leaves, so we're going to cut it there. I'll do it in stages. Okay, so we'll leave that for now. Oh, I've got a big leaf here. We'll leave that for now. Stub up here. That's quite a big course. There's an opportunity here to take one, and one there and one there and actually cut that there. That's what I'm going to do. He says with the, with the wrong, wrong colour, so we'll just do that. Okay. So that's a lovely opportunity there, um, which means chances are I will end up removing that, that on this side. Uh, okay, nothing needs to deal with there. Okay, let's just cut some obvious big ones back. Let's get them out of the way. I would imagine that you can do cuttings of these if you wanted. Okay, back to where we're looking at. We've got this one back here. This one back here. Gosh, don't half make trees look uh, bare sometimes. Right, 
every part of me is saying cut that away let that one be the new that one be the new one so here we've got a great old clutch of horrible growth but a little one growing from the middle that one would go we wouldn't have that one if you look underneath you've actually got a shoot here and a shoot there so let's get rid of that how horrible that is very very coarse okay what do you do with it that one's going to be going up so i don't want that one up okay we've got that there i'd like that one to grow it's a good place on this as well right i'm 90 percent sure i'm going to remove this branch now that's really ugly no matter how you look at it so what i'm going to do is take that off okay so now we've just got this back one here which could still prove useful if that branch comes well, it'll come across it so it won't do I just do it? I think he's screaming out to do it. I don't think that looks natural. It just, just looks wrong. It's so straight and flat. It's all right when it's hidden by foliage, but it's wrong. I'm wondering. Let's make this decision easier. I don't know how this will react. You know I'm about to do something silly, don't you? I always go to do something silly whenever I say something like that. But if I actually take it back... This is the problem here, just here. So if I take it back there. That was a silly cut. Need the curve one. There we go. Right, so what everyone has to do is to make sure they remind me that I did that cut because I wanted to see if that would um promote any back budding somewhere lower down here. I mean, the truth is we're getting so close to this one that it probably doesn't matter. I would imagine it's going to, oh, that's going to die off. Anyway, so we want everything to be growing here and here. So all the energy now that's in this tree is going to be trying to recover and throw everything out on. The... I, I, I think I should put my tools away on this because if I've got a funny feeling if I go, if I stay in front of this much longer, it's going to be, uh, it's going to just look like a stick. I'll say I'm not unhappy with the decisions I've made and I was able to make these decisions because just how healthy this was looking <laughs> was. As I said, I'm able to make these decisions because it was very, very healthy. It's the first year it's been very healthy. I'll whack Dougie's balls on there. Um, they're always good. I'm going to keep it out of the sunlight so it'll be in a very shady space so that it doesn't get cooked. It's survived through most of my other battering so I'm sure it's going to be fine for this. Um, oh, what I do need to do It's my soap and water spray up into those crevices. What we do want to make sure is that <laughs> what foliage we have got is kept healthy. So let's make sure we have not got any little aphids or anything, woolly, woolly mammoths, hanging around this. Okay, so that's Zeta's apple. Seriously, I, I, I've made these moves. I'm quite, I'm, I'm quite happy. This is going to be fine. Um, very, very good, healthy root structure. So that should promote a lot of new growth. And the nice thing is, proportionally wise, we're going to start having a better scale to it. And then I think this one really is going to, I'm going to stick with clip and grow. And I imagine I'm fading out, looking at the way the sun's coming straight at me. Let's show you another couple of trees that I don't normally talk about. Here we've got a, um, I've got about 20 or so crab apples, a bit like I do with all of the, uh, um, this sort of size trees. I get them as the, the saplings and then put them in pots and either forget them or until I know what to do with them. These have taken a while, but some of them have started getting some nice shape on them. And some of them are apples and I don't realise. So first question, can you tell the difference between a crab apple and an apple if they haven't got fruit? Um, is there a real obvious way of knowing? The only apples I've got are from the monks, and these were all saplings. I've got a funny feeling this might be an apple, but anyway. So, same principle again. I want to take that one back. 
head on back there because what I really get rid of that upper one and again underneath there I can see the little white fluff and the aphids love to go right there right where the um, the new bud would come from which is probably the fleshiest bit of it so that's where you normally start looking first and also you'll start seeing that sort of sweet that sticky sort of resin on there got a branch back here far too low there we go I'm just cleaning it up really cleaning it up for me normally means removing everything that's green probably reduce the size of that leaf it's all right happy with that need to spray a little branch at the back here which I'd really like growth to go to and you see this way this I, this is why they're not my tree tree of choice they form these little scabs and scars and I know they're what you call a very very coarse tree all fruit trees are like that um, but I'm forever trying to nibble away to make them smooth and of course the nibbling away at them is what increases the uh, the, the scarring because of the way it heals up so vigorously um, here that's something that's going to be downwards but I don't need to make decisions about that yet under there probably don't want that and again I can see the little white there we go also you want to be looking out for signs of rust or anything like that Fungus, the funguses love to hit these fruit fruiting varieties and then bring it back okay and that's that's all I'm going to do with that one and I've got a number of them that are looking like this probably the best thing to do here get them into the bed and really let them beef up a bit uh, and then we've got this one we obviously start off with um, my wife's apple but uh, my granddaughter Zeta named after her grandmother obviously um, she's been working on this little tree with me so this is Zeta's apple and all I'm going to do with this is because I'm not going to make big pruning decisions because she helps me with those but I do need to just control this a little bit um, so we've got lots of growth up here let's cut the ends off bring it back we want light to get into there here we've got upward growing one which may or may not cause a problem let's just clean that up right there there's actually a, a little a uh, little bud point they bud so easily from normally from all the scar sites is where they'll bud from which probably makes total sense there's a bud point down there so if I remove this that will encourage little bud points there or there which is much more where I want them and I can remove this whole growth here you can normally if you get really close I can't close up enough you can see in all the the ridge lines normally is where you'll get these little red buds very very microscopic the other thing they can tend to suffer from is powdery mildew. And I say sometimes you don't have to be too sort of um, scientific about it. It's I'm reducing some leaves um, where there's obvious junctions. I'll remove the usual. A lot of the time I just want it so it looks nice as well. Big spur there. Got that there, there, and there. Hmm. I don't I'll just leave that for now and then if we've got that coming up that way that means that's got to be a little bit higher so we'll do that for now just some Oceana seaweed pellets on there put that in a shady spot and hopefully uh, see if we'll be happy when she sees it well who'd have thought it it's five weeks later and uh, who'd have thought we'd see the, uh, the progress on this tree? Now, I guarantee you, there were some of you who watched what I did to this 
and as I removed stuff from here and, and really took away all that lovely growth, you probably thought, oh, here we go. He's going extreme. Maybe he's trying to get clicks and likes. I don't know. But no, um, I had confidence having observed what Apple do when you cut off all their limbs. And uh, sure enough, let's zoom in and have a look and see if I was right to just hold that, stump, that stub back a bit. And obviously we've had loads of growth here, but this was the, uh, the one where I really cut that very big long, what looked like quite a nice branch back to literally this inch long stub. And I think I said at the time, I, I'm not sure, let's, let's keep a bit of a stub and see if it uh, sends something out. Well clearly, it sends something out to the front, but more importantly, it has sent a really nice large shoot out to the back. And I said the only reason for keeping this was it would be nice to get a back branch for somewhere like there. Got loads and loads of woolly aphids on it as well. Um, always looking out for them. So I'm not going to prune heavily, but I'm going to just clear it up a little bit. So much more growth. Um, Again, I'll clean up stubs. I might just take just a little bit off, just to maintain some sort of shape. Upward growth, don't want that. But I do want to keep enough, enough greenery on it that we're actually going to be gaining loads of energy. Anything that's here, it's right in, close to the crotch we don't want that so cleaning up the stuff that we know we're not going to use um, as I say I want to be careful I'll get rid of any damage lace but I want to be careful not to take too much back and I can already feel myself wanting to do that as I take it slowly I want to actually leave growth on this now but let's talk about the big thing that was probably going to be the most significant decision I made in the earlier pruning which was this stub here First of all, I can probably take the stub a little bit further back. Who knows, I may prompt something more. I want to take any leaves that are close in so I can see what I've got. Okay, so we've, if we're looking at a front that's in there, then we've got this that's going to go out perfectly to the back, so I just want that to continue to grow. Now, there is a, an element that I could actually slowly whittle that, that down and have that as well. The only problem with that is, I think you can see, is that the direction it's coming out is going to grow straight towards or straight across us. What I could do in this instance is see if I can encourage a bud to come from here and maybe take it out that way because it would be quite nice if I got another branch just coming out here. So that's about the only one I'll cut back hard and see if it does that. Um, Okay, so all cleaned up, give you a spin. A um, lot of fun, so a lot of foliage there. Got this clearly defined, a branches, and we can see our branch structure as it's gonna be. This area here is still very, very thin and scarred. Um, it would be lovely if something came up from this side somewhere, I'd love it, but we'll wait and see. But I think when you compare it to where it was, and even where it was five or six weeks ago, you might say the work I did is starting to show good results. So um, never be afraid to make tough pruning decisions. Never be afraid to, to leave a little bit back just to see whether you get successful new growth where you want it most. So I would imagine what's gonna happen now is you're gonna have to go through the tedium of seeing me back in early June. Goodness knows what my hair looked like then. Goodness knows about my fashion sense. Why don't you just wait and see? So, over to me. Okay, so we've had a bit of fun with some apple and crab apple. And again, please, please, if anyone knows an easy way to tell the difference, apart from the size of the fruit, then let me know in the comments. I definitely am frazzling now. Yeah, this is a bit of a, um, a clickbait trailer because larches are, are coming up heavily now. So, from Xavier, cooking at the patio end of the garden. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch. All my best to everyone, and certainly for those of you out there who uh, have got issues you're dealing with, thoughts are with you, and uh, happy bonsai. God bless.
Cheers.